as all of us still try to come to grips with the glory and the greatness of what happened Sunday at the 2016 Royal Rumble, I, your prophet, you, 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 your prophet, come to you today at this moment in time with a message, a message of thanks, a message of thanksgiving, a message of thanksgiving to he who hath made all of this possible as we now find ourselves looking forward to more than ever the road to WrestleMania 32. May we now all bow our heads in prayer. Lord, make me your prophet, an instrument of your peace. Where there is despair, you are the only hope. Where there is sadness, spit holy water. Where there is doubt, use backstage politics. Where there is darkness, light a main event path. Where there is injury, make yourself champ. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear not the evil of the Roman Empire, for you are with me. Your sledgehammer and your world title, they comfort me. You prepare a seat for me at the breakfast club table in the presence of our enemies. Surely your greatness will follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of Triple H forever. I pray on this today, on the Hunter, the Hurst, and the Helmsley. Amen. Praise God! Amen and hallelujah! Ugh, indeed. I don't know about any of you, but I absolutely love the way this week's show kicked off. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just a glutton for this type of stuff. But 15 plus minutes of absolute promo gold, in my humble opinion. What I liked about the way this show kicked off was obviously it tied into the finish of the Royal Rumble, which is what you would expect. But what I really like about this is there's no longer any tap dancing. There's no longer trying to pander to one side but yet the other and trying to be all things. The McMahon-Helmsley regime, the authority, is trying to go down one path in one direction, and that's the right path in the right direction. They're trying to get the people to hate them. This is how the McMahon-Helmsley era has always worked best. This is how the McMahon family draws money, because people want to hate on them on television and in person. They don't want to cheer for them. They don't want to like them. There's a lot of animus there over the years for a lot of things involving the professional wrestling business. Give us a reason to hate you. And they're doing everything they can to make sure they do just that. And me personally, I thought it was glorious. But again, that could just be me. However, one quick note. I have a message to all of you non-believers. I know some of you We'll try and get into the semantics of, well, Triple H referred to Vince McMahon and said he might as well be God. And he did say that. But you would expect that from a humble, immortal, divine being such as Triple H. Furthermore, that was an analogy. He said, it's like he should be God or might as well be God. But the simple fact of the matter is, we know there is only one Heavenly Father and we know there is only one God. And if Triple H said that the WWE ring and that company was his church and his religion, that means that people are supposed to worship him, which would make him, oh, praise God! Ugh. And if that would have been all that I watched on this week's show, I'd have been happy, I'd have been fine, I'd have been like, fuck it, let's go home, let's wait till next week. But the WWE gave me more, more, more! Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler, who gives a shit about the match? Kevin Owens, bury that jobber doll signal. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. That's the shit I like to see. All these years later, still has no personality, still has no fucking character, absolutely zero goddamn charisma, and I'm tired of him wasting time on television and taking away somebody else's spot where they actually have a chance, by God, to get over. This pleased me greatly. Yay, Kevin Owens! And as far as Dolph goes, can I get three claps and a fuck Dolph Ziggler? Fuck Dolph Ziggler! So the hits just kept on coming. 
Apparently, Flo Rida is going to be doing the official theme song for WrestleMania 32, and I, I'm that one. Number one, this show is Triple H Mania. Number two, if anybody should have the theme song for WrestleMania 32, Triple H Mania, if you will, it should be the game, the King of Kings, the Cerebral Assassin. Can I get a praise God? Anyways, nonetheless, they try to tie into something on the show, which is fine. Here comes Dumb Dick Florida coming up the freaking ramp. He's getting into the ring, and apparently they're using him in part to help introduce the Dudley Boys via a freaking battle rap with Bo Dallas. God damn it, I'm starting to enjoy the social outcast. And you know what's sad about this? Yet also incredibly hilarious about this, in my humble opinion, Bo Dallas absolutely destroyed Flo Rida, which probably isn't saying much. Flo Rida was exposed as a studio artist and not a very good one either. Bo Dallas buried his shit. And the sad thing is, when it comes to the wrestling business, he didn't even face off against the best of the battle rappers. I know what some of you are going to say. Thugonomics, John Cena would have buried him, eaten him alive, shit him back out, and destroyed him. No, 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 no. I personally, personally, no one that's better. A battle rapper for all the ages. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce him to you now because he's got something to say to full writer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dick Storm, baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have heard some rappers in my day, but this one might just take the cake. Apparently, Flo Rida, that's right, Flo Rida, he won't battle. He won't battle rap. All I gotta say is, dude, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. When you mess with the bull, you might get the horns. Don't ever bring a knife to a gunfight at it. And when you step up to the mound, you best make sure that Babe Ruth ain't at the plate. Because otherwise I'm going to knock your ass out the fucking park. You best believe that. Because what you're looking at right here, right here, right now, in this moment in time, is 100% certifiable. The greatest rapper in professional wrestling today. No, 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 no. Scratch that, scratch that, scratch that, dog. Scratch that, dog. What we're really looking at here is 100% certifiable. The greatest rapper alive today. So everyone, y'all in for a real treat. Where am I beat at, little fella? Never mind. I'll just take a seat. About to rock this shit acapella. Oh yeah, acapella, bitches. This is something all can enjoy. Gotta get ready and set to go to battle. They call me the Rap Games Cowboy. All these other fools, they just some dumb wannabe cattle. I love exposing all these no talent clowns, especially medium shirt rocking fools like Flo Rida. About to eat this clown like he's half sprouts. Serving up taters for breakfast, just call me old Rider. Time to verbally dust this whack ass fool without prejudice but plenty of malice. Dude just got taken to rap school by a jobber named Bo freaking Dallas. It's sad, but you know it's true. You another no talent hack mainstream rapper. Go hide behind your pants sagging suspect ass crew. I just dropped more talent in the fucking crapper. Your bars are weak and borderline sickening. Need to grab me some Alka Seltzer. Hope everyone comes to an awakening. Flow Rider working the rap game like the wrestling business got whipped by Dave freaking Meltzer. I don't mean to be stop no drama. But dominating rap battles is always my norm. Better go on and ask your mama. Cause I'm your daddy! Call me the Dick Stone! Woo! Ride the Dick Stone, baby! I do believe that's what they call a pipe bomb motherfucker. I think you gotta admit, Dick Storm just buried and destroyed, systematically destroyed, a professional rapper. That was embarrassing, but speaks to the greatness of the Dick Storm in his rap battle game. Now, moving on, the hits just kept coming to me with this show. Lo and behold, what do you know? A special attraction match right here on Raw. First time ever. Father Christmas versus Emo. Emo. 
<laughs> Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles. It's funny how when they were interviewing AJ, they made sure that Chris Jericho interrupted. They're like, nah, we're going to make sure the focus is on him heading into the match. But here we go. Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles. First time ever, baby. Right here on Monday Night Raw. Finally, we get this match. I don't know if it's due to Chris Jericho's dad bod or the phenomenal part in AJ Styles' hair. I'm not really sure. Uh, but this match was not great. Now, granted, this is the first time I've ever touched. I suppose there would be some kinks that have to be worked out. There's a lack of chemistry there and everything else. And it was still cool. It was still nice to see these two guys wrestle. And it's nice to see, at least initially, they're going to present AJ Styles like he's a big deal. But let's not call this match something phenomenal or anything like that. Because that it most certainly was not. It gets you by because of the specialness of the attraction of the match. Of these two guys have never faced off. What would happen here? It's almost like you would have rather seen a little bit of buildup to this match heading into a fast lane pay per view as opposed to just AJ's debut on Raw. And the next night we're going right into him and Y2J. Oh boy, this is Sunday for the revolution. We got going on here. Watch every balloon. They've got multiple segments in it. It's awesome. Let's look at what happened this week for these poor, poor divas. Sasha and Becky. Okay, they're facing off. It makes sense. But you give them, like, no fucking time at all. And I understand there's some story here. But you got to give it a couple more minutes to develop and actually give us a chance to want to give a fuck about this. And then you've got Alicia Fox and Brie Bella taking on Natalia and Paige. I understand why Alicia and Brie would be teaming together. That's been touched on in the past, explained in the past. All of a sudden now, Natalia and Paige are just randomly fucking thrown together where a couple of weeks ago, Paige was acting like a fucking cunt. Now we're supposed to cheer her with no real explanation for it. She's gone from being the complete anti-diva to the perfect epitome of the stupidity of today's divas. More specifically, though, the stupidity of today's diva division. Oh, they're all on Total Divas. That's all the reason. Ah, oh, fuck this. This is the point in time where I wish we could get some candy, 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 candy. Ah, oh, fuck. You know, if you want to build up Bray Wyatt to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32, have at it. Do whatever the fuck you want. Don't expect me to care about it. But if you do want me to care about it, you should put forth better effort than having Bray Wyatt beat Kane in a singles match. Because that carries very little weight. And that does pretty much nothing to build up Bray Wyatt to go face the fucking beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. It's literally to the point where they're doing a better job of building up Braun Strowman into a beast to potentially face off with Bra. Oh. Fucking Christ, please don't tell me you're going there. So the WWE had taken to social media and was teasing the return of a major superstar to Raw. And they're in Miami. You can probably put two and two together, but it doesn't matter. At first, you think it's The Miz. Oh, no, it's The Rock. The Jabroni being wow, pie-eating, trail-blazing, eyebrow-raising, crystal clear. Have no fear, people's champ, the motherfucking Rock. Is on the Raw after the Royal Rumble, and it's great shit. And the fucking Rock was incredible here. <laughs> this was this was almost like unintentional Hollywood heel Rock. He's fucking digging in at the Big Show. He's fucking with Lana, and then he gets into it with the New Day. This shit was great. Now some of you are gonna sit there and say, "Well, it didn't really have much consequence, or it didn't have much purpose." The fucking rock was great. Did it really need to have much consequence or purpose? Every once in a while, it's just nice to have this shit. And furthermore, furthermore, who says that this doesn't have a purpose? After all, they tied it into his family, the Usos. Who's to say that there isn't a higher power at work here? And there's a bigger purpose for the rock's appearance this week that is yet to be revealed. Oh, praise God! Hello! Everyone, my name is the Blue Bart Un. I am the president of the fan club for the Viper Randall Keith Orton. I was excited when I heard a major Raw superstar was coming back Monday night. Oh, to see Orton again would be such a tremendous delight. 
However, I found out that I was also very wrong. The Rock, who cares? Hey, stupid and a dumb ding dong. I'm going to sue you, WWE, for everything that you're worth. No longer will you mislead me because I will kick your ass. I know that last part didn't rhyme, but it really doesn't matter because I'm out of time. We just want Randall Keith Orton back. The Viper is the greatest of all time. Yay, yay. We need Mr. RKO back on Raw as soon as we can. That is the one and one true way to save WrestleMania. Only he can. Yay, yay. And one of the themes that was playing out throughout the course of the night, it began at the beginning of the night with Stephanie McMahon delivering this edict that they were going to be paying attention to people throughout the night and people had a chance to impress them and whoever impressed them the most would go on to wrestle a number one contenders match at Fastlane and the winner of that match gets to take on Triple H himself at Triple H Mania on April 3rd, 2016 at AT&T Stadium. Oh, baby! That's right, God ain't defending at mid-car pay-per-views, bitches. But my, my whole thing here, and this comes back to the WWE's booking of that authority figure, sans Triple H here, Vince and Stephanie. You had the whole deal about getting the belt off of Roman Reigns. You did all these stupid things, and God himself had to come down at number 30 and save the day. He had to get it done himself. Now he's the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Why would you bother with this main event tag match between... Uh, Roman Reigns and Ambrose on one team and League of Nations on the other team because at the end of the day, the win and you're still going to give them a shot? Even a shot to get a shot at the title? Now, number one, this doesn't make any sense because Roman Reigns, having been the champion, would contractually already get a rematch anyways, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? So wouldn't he, A, have a right to ask for a rematch or fast lane, or B, say no, Fuck you. I'll see you, Hunter, at WrestleMania. You figure out what the hell to do with your fast lane main event. You would think that would be option number one. Or option number two, you would at least do more to sit there and make the path more difficult for Roman Reigns to get back at Triple H. What the hell is the point of doing this here if you sit there and put him right back in a position where he could get that shot and technically he already has a shot because he was the former champion? He gets a goddamn rematch in his contract! This lack of attention to detail just makes that authority heel figure look completely fucking stupid and ridiculous. Why go through all these exercises in futility just to sit there and still give the guy a chance any goddamn ways? It makes absolutely no fucking sense. And it telegraphs things and makes things oh so predictable already. At least if you were keeping Reigns out of it, people would sit there and think, ah, they'll get back to it at some point, but you don't know where they're going and you don't know how to get there. But instead, they've already kind of given this. You know Brock Lesnar's not winning because he's going to get screwed over by the Wyatt family or Bray Wyatt. Yet highly doubt Dean Ambrose will win. I mean, unless you're going to throw us a monkey wrench and you're going to do a damn triple threat at WrestleMania. And then you have Ambrose turn heel. I mean, that doesn't seem to make much sense either. Then why the hell would you have done this what you did at the Royal Rumble? This is damn it. This is stupid. Stupid. That's right. Summer's back, bitches. Long time no see. And let me tell you something right here and right now. I know Triple H likes to think of himself as God. Triple H thinks that the WWE ring is his church and his religion. Well, I promise you this much. Come fast lane. Roman Reigns is winning. And then he's going to go on to WrestleMania 32. Oh, yes. In front of 110 plus thousand people. And he once again is going to reign supreme. Once again, he's going to rule. And once again, the Roman Empire will overcome God because Roman reigns rules. Hell yeah, bitches. Fuck you, Triple H. We'll see you at WrestleMania, bitch. Roman, love you. Love you, Roman. Roman, love you. Call me. So I have to say... There were plenty of things that I actually enjoyed about this show. If I suspend my thoughts about plot hole logics and things like that, 
there were enough moments that made me say, hey, this is a good follow-up to the Royal Rumble. I enjoyed this. Hopefully I get more Raws like this on the road to WrestleMania. It was just my opinion. But before I go, let me leave you with this. Let's bow our heads in prayer one more time. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Triple H my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray to God to mania the belt he'll take. Praise God. Amen.